Hello, tea lovers. Welcome to Rebecca's Tea Cozy. I'm your hostess, Rebecca, and I invite you to join me as we share a love of tea and other things that are cozy to nourish our bodies and our souls. So today's episode of Let's Talk Tea is going to dive in to step three from the first episode in our series, All About Tea, The Basics, which focused on brewing the perfect cup of tea. And step three specifically talked about steeping. So last week, if you joined us, we talked about the temperature of the water to bring out the best flavor in the tea. And today we're going to talk about another aspect of steeping, which is the length of time that you allow your tea to sit in the water brewing. Just a disclaimer again, I am not a tea professional. I'm just a regular gal who enjoys drinking tea and has had a lot of experience on my own, as well as done some reading to try and figure out the nuances of making a great tasting cup of tea. Before we talk about the time of steeping tea, let's talk about some tools that we need in order to steep loose leaf tea. Tea bags, of course, come in their own packages or tea sachets, but when you're using loose leaf tea, which we've determined provides a better quality tasting tea, you will need a way to steep that tea. So I've brought some tools with me that we can talk about quickly for those of you who are interested in diving into the world of loose leaf tea and just aren't quite sure what to use. Some of the most common tools are these, which might be a tea ball or some fancy strainers. They have all kinds of different ones, different shapes, animals. And you'll notice with these that there's not a lot of room inside of them. So if you're steeping a smaller leaf tea, like we're going to use today in our tea tasting experiment, then they do okay. But if you remember the episode on quality tea, we talked about how a lot of the flavor comes from the leaves being able to unfurl and the water being able to make contact with the surface of the tea leaf. So if you have larger leaf teas, one, there are some large leaf teas that won't even fit in here, but two, it doesn't allow those tea leaves to fully expand and release their flavor. The other thing that I found is when I'm using these that a lot of times the seal isn't great, so it tends to leak out tea leaves into my cup, which isn't a big deal. It's not going to hurt you, but some people find that annoying to have leaves floating around in their tea. So these are two types of steeping tools that you may use, but again, they're not necessarily recommended to get the best flavor, especially if you're going to use a larger amount of tea or a tea with a larger leaf. The tool that I use most frequently is a steeping basket. It could also be called a filter or a strainer. And this just sets directly into your teacup or into your teapot, depending on what you're using. Now you can see that this one is a little large for my cup or this particular pot. And I have different sizes of these to best fit the type of cup that I'm using or teapot that I'm using. There's also some that have a wide lip to them so that they fit in very narrow cups as well as larger cups. And I will leave a few links to some of the tools that you might find helpful in the description box in case you're interested in checking out some of the different variations. This is the easiest to put your tea in, drop it in, pour your water over top, and pull it out and all of the leaves are contained. Another steeping tool that you may have found or seen is one that looks like this. And this one is very shallow. It comes with its own little holder. And when I first received this as a gift, I was wondering, how is this going to work? Because it's not going to allow the leaves to actually be inside where the water is. And it took me a bit, but then I was watching a British show and they were using one of these and I realized, oh, that's how. Now, please don't laugh at me if you um, think that it should have been common sense. I admit my moment of uncertainty or my moment of not having common sense at that time. Um, so what you do is you put your leaves in a separate pot or vessel. You steep the tea here. And then as you're pouring, if any leaves come out of the spout, this catches those leaves. And then you can set that to the side, enjoy your tea, and then when you're ready for a second cup, 
you put it back on, you pour, it catches the loose leaves, and then you set it aside again. So just another way to strain out, instead of straining during the steeping process, you strain after the steeping process. And another way is to use some type of lidded cup. This is an actual tea tasting cup, or you might use what's called a gaiwan, uh, which is a lidded vessel. Um, some of them are very beautiful, typically found in a Chinese or Japanese type tea ceremony. So here you put the leaves directly in the cup, you steep them in here, and then when you're ready, you pour the liqueur into your cup. And then you can continue to fill this with water to re-steep multiple times, and then pour it into your cup when you're ready to drink. So those are a few of the tools that you can use or methods that you can use to steep loose leaf teas. Today, we're going to do an experiment to see how the length of time impacts the flavor and the color of the tea. So I'm gonna transition and grab the items that we're going to need to do our tea tasting test today. Be right back. Before we actually conduct the tea tasting experiment, let's talk about some of the factors that impact the steeping time. So one of those factors is, of course, personal preference. Some people prefer a stronger cup of tea, while others prefer a weaker cup of tea. I'm definitely towards the weaker side, um, although I do like my tea to have a flavor. Another one is the quality of the tea, which we discussed in a prior episode, how based on what the quality is, that it's going to bring out a better flavor, or you're going to need more or less steeping time. The size of the tea leaves is important in determining how long you're going to steep. Again, as we saw with tea bags, they steep and extract that flavor much more quickly because the size of the leaves or particles is so small versus those that are fuller leaf teas may need a little bit longer time. In one of our episodes, we looked at the temperature of the water. So not only is it important to have the right temperature to bring out flavor, but the temperature of the water at a higher temperature is going to steep um, more quickly, pulling the flavor out than the temperature at a lower temperature. So some of you may be familiar with sun tea or cold brewing. You can actually brew tea in the refrigerator, but letting it steep over a long period of time. And then another aspect, and one of the ones that we're going to focus on today, is the tea leaf to tea water ratio. And so that's partly a style of brewing technique. And if you follow a Western brewing technique style, which typically you'll find on packages of teas from India, like Assam's or Ceylon or English breakfast, then you're going to have a smaller amount of tea leaf and a higher amount of water and the steeping time will be a little longer because you have less leaves in more water. If you follow more of an Eastern brewing technique, and I'm using that term Eastern loosely because it's not necessarily referred to as Eastern, you will see it referred to as Gong Fu, and that really implies a whole ritual or ceremony around the experience, but as far as the steeping or brewing portion of it, you use a higher ratio of tea leaves and a much shorter steeping time. The principle behind that is that you are going to have multiple steepings. And with each steeping, the leaves are continuing to unfurl even more, which brings out different nuances of flavor. So as you begin drinking the tea to your last cup of the tea, you get to experience a range of flavors. So today's tea that we're going to be using for this tea tasting experiment is another tea from Artful Teas, which is an organic Assam tea, which is a tea that um, is coming from India. It has a smaller leaf size, and since it's a tea from India, it is more recommended to follow the Western brewing technique. So the recommendation is one teaspoon of tea for every six ounces of water and to use boiling water as the temperature and steep three to four minutes. Now again, because there are so many nuances to the teas, where they're from, the, um, 
the type of tea as well as the size of the leaf, it is recommended to follow the guidance on the package that your tea comes in, at least until you start to learn what your preferences are or know how you enjoy your tea. So that's a good starting place. So for the purposes of our experiment today, since these are smaller than what a typical six to eight ounce cup or mug would hold, I've put about a half to three quarters of a teaspoon in all of the cups, so it was an equal measurement. And what we're going to vary is the length of time that we're going to steep the teas. So the recommended time on the package was three to four minutes. And I know that I like my teas a little less strong. So we're going to try a two minute time frame and a three minute time frame. So it's around that recommended temperature. But then we're going to try one at five minutes, which would be according to the package direction and my personal taste. It's going to be over steeping. And then we're going to try one at 45 seconds, which is sometimes about how long I'll let a tea sit, especially uh, depending on the amount of tea that I've put in and the size of the leaf, or like I said, if it's a tea bag. So this would technically be considered under steeping if I go off of the guidelines of the packaging. So we're going to need for this tea boiling water or close to boiling water, which is on the stove now. So I'm going to go grab that, be right back, and we'll begin our experiment. So I just pulled our water off the stove and it is at boiling. I'm going to put the water in each of the cups. We're going to set a timer for five minutes. And at each of these increments, we're going to pour the liqueur into the cup and it will be ready for tasting. All right, so we have steeped all four teas from 45 seconds up to five minutes. And before we actually begin tasting, I wanna point out two things that you'll notice. First of all, the color of the tea is different from the 45 seconds to the five minutes. And there's not a significant difference, partly because of the amount of tea that we're using right now, but you will notice that the longer it steeps, the darker it gets. And the other thing that is interesting to note, which I'm not sure how well it's going to show up on camera, but if you look at the leaves themselves, we talked about how the flavor comes from the tea leaves unfurling. And so if you look at the 45 second tea leaves, versus the five minute tea leaves. You'll notice that this one looks, in the picture, probably a little fluffier, so to speak, but they are larger, they've unfurled more, meaning that they've released more of the flavor. So again, you can see how, whether you allow it to steep for a long time or whether it's you start steeping here, but then with each multiple steeping, those tea leaves continue to open and give additional flavor which is why I prefer to put a little bit more leaf in, but do a shorter steeping and have multiple steeping so that I continue to extract the flavor out. If you're in a hurry and you know you're only going to want one cup and you want it a little stronger to wake you up in the morning, then obviously you might allow it to sit in and steep more deeply and intensely for that rich flavor out of one steeping of the tea leaves. If you're using one of those small strainers and it's all confined in that little space, it doesn't really allow those leaves to expand and release and stretch out and allow their flavor to soak into the water. So another reason why you might want to use a strainer or allow them to steep directly in a vessel so they can truly expand and release all the potential of flavor that they have. So let's go ahead and begin the taste testing. So the 45 second. This is really light. There's no bitterness, no astringency. It is a little bit more on the watery side. There's not a lot of intensity of flavor, but I can taste the tea leaves and there's kind of a sweetness there to the liqueur. For the two minute tea, It has a nice flavor, it's mellow, 
you can taste the flavor of the tea. There's no astringency, there's no bitterness, uh, it's not thick or heavy, uh, it's nice and clean tasting and refreshing. The three minute, which this is the time frame that was recommended for the amount of tea to the water ratio. Again, you can still taste the flavor of the tea. It's a little stronger than the two minute tea and the flavor is smooth and clean and refreshing, but on the end, there's a little bit of aftertaste where I start to get that hint of astringency or bitterness, which isn't um, off-putting in any way, but usually I like my tea at around this level so that I'm not getting that bite on the end of the tea. And now for the five minutes. Definitely more intense uh, and it makes my mouth want to draw up in that little bit of bitter astringent feeling uh, where your mouth just wants to pucker. So uh, this one would definitely be too strong for me. And again, this is outside of the recommended steeping time. It is over steeping. So it's starting to pull too much of the flavors that we don't want out of the leaves. So what have we learned from our experiment? Well, one, that tea needs time to release its flavor. And depending on how long it's in your cup or how much tea is in your cup, it's going to release a different amount of flavor. In order to get the best flavor, you wanna time it so that it has enough time to release from the leaves, but not so much time that it's extracting a lot of the other flavors out that are going to cause it to be bitter or astringent, unless of course you prefer that. We've also learned that as the tea is steeping, the longer it steeps, whether it's in one setting or whether it's in multiple steepings over time, that the leaves will continue to unfurl, which is where they're releasing more and more flavor. And so that's important when you think about how you're steeping your tea and what you're using to steep your tea as well. So a few tips is if you're not quite sure how you'd like your teas yet, you may wanna start at about 45 seconds to a minute, test it, see what it tastes like. And if you feel like it's just not a lot of flavor there yet, then put it back in to continue steeping for another 30 seconds or so, and then continue to taste it until it gets to the taste or flavor profile that you find enjoyable. If you oversteep the tea, as I recommended in the first episode, is that you can pour some of it out into another cup and add hot water to the strong tea to thin it out a little bit, water it down a little bit, and it will help you be able to salvage that tea and not waste it. And then you can, when you go back for your second cup, pour the additional strong tea into your cup and add hot water again, So you now have two cups of tea out of that one really strong one. So as always, I would love to hear from you something that maybe you've learned today or a tip that you have for us about time and temperature or steeping equipment that you use. What's your favorite way to prepare your tea? If you'd like to reach out to me directly, you can email me. I'd love to connect with you. On next week's episode of Let's Talk Tea, we're going to begin a new series all about the different types of tea. So if you're confused about white tea, black tea, yellow tea, green tea, red tea, Indian teas, Chinese teas, Japanese teas, Kenyan teas, we're going to begin a new series that will help demystify or simplify all of the different types of teas. So I look forward to you joining me next week at Rebecca's Tea Cozy. And until then, be blessed with a cup of tea.